We don't know all the answers yet, and I would caution against jumping to conclusions until we have all the facts. That was either a very prescient or a very observant caution from President Obama today about the shootings at Fort Hood. Because today, just as the president was urging diligence and deliberation, WorldNet Daily, the conservative conspiracy theory factory best known for advancing the cause of the birthers, was charming its way into the hearts of millions with this. This headline, claiming that the alleged shooter, Army Major Nadal Hassan, was an advisor to President Obama's White House transition office, implying that Mr. Hassan was on, essentially, the president's payroll. It may surprise you to learn that that's not true, even though it's a headline on World Net Daily. I know. Hassan uh, was not an advisor to the Obama transition. He was not an appointee to some kind of Homeland Security task force. He attended a meeting, actually, at a college. He sat in the audience, and that college wrote to the new administration to give them unsolicited advice. As Spencer Ackerman put it today at the Washington Independent, quote, really, this is as stupid as saying that a guy who writes a letter to the New York Times advised editor Bill Keller. It's actually even stupider than that, considering that Hassan himself isn't known to have written anything to anyone. He sat in the audience. So, really, it's like saying that anyone who ever saw anyone else write a letter to the editor was an advisor to the New York Times. But that's not all. This is America's conspiratorial right wing today. This is World Net Daily. So, of course, there's more. You might remember last month, four Republican members of Congress held a press conference during which they demanded an investigation into the Council on American Islamic Relations because the group was allegedly deep into a secret plot to place Muslim interns on Capitol Hill. The book on which that publicity stunt was based was, naturally, published by WorldNet Daily. One of the book's co-authors today came out with this insight into the motives and allegiances that he's divined about the alleged Fort Hood shooter. Quote, Hassan is a terrorist supporting the ideology of al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah, and, yes, the Council on American-Islamic Relations. <sighs> Joining us now is Suhail Khan, Senior Fellow for Muslim Christian Understanding at the Institute for Global Engagement. He's also a, a, a former senior political appointee in the administration of President George W. Bush. Mr. Khan, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me, Rachel. What's your reaction uh, when you hear a conservative writer equating al-Qaeda and the Council on American Islamic, Islamic Relations, which, of course, condemns violence and has long since specifically condemned the Fort Hood shootings? It's just another instance, uh, a sad instance. You know, we are in a national uh, period of mourning after the tragedy of Fort Hood, where we lost so many lives senselessly to this uh, unfortunate incident where uh, there was violence and people were killed and wounded. And it's even more sad to see that there might be some who would use and exploit this tragedy uh, for their political partisan and worse, for their racist ends. Even as the FBI and the commanding officer at Fort Hood have said that the evidence does not necessarily suggest that this is an act of terrorism, or it should be viewed that way, the arguably premature discussion about terrorism and whether or not our military has been infiltrated, it's happening not just in World Net Daily Wingnutville. It's happening all over the place, even in the mainstream media. C can you say anything to us about how that is playing out among Muslim Americans serving in our military? You know, it's just another tragedy that heaped upon a sad incident here. You have 15,000 to 20,000 Muslim Americans who are proudly serving in our armed services and all branches. Uh, Muslim Americans have served in our country's uh, armed services since the Revolutionary War with distinction. And so I think in talking to my friends who are serving uh, in uniform, they are concerned. They know that their fellow uh, their fellow countrymen in, in uniform know them and trust them and uh, continue to serve with them uh, as they would as, as brothers and, and men and women in, in uh, military service. But they are concerned that there would be a backlash in the public because unfortunately there are people, as you pointed out, unfortunately on the internet and on television programs that are you know, questioning their loyalty just strictly because of their faith. You know, Suhail, there, there was another horrible mass shooting today. This one was in an Orlando office building. Police say in that case, the alleged gunman opened fire at a company that he'd been fired from a couple of years ago. And, of course, in that case, no one is talking about that as an incident of terrorism. It's being seen as a workplace 
shooting. Right. Do, right. Do, do, you, do you think the contrast between the speculation about the motives in these shootings is important? Obviously, the timing appears to be purely coincidental, but is it instructive in terms of the different ways these have been responded to? Well, these, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're learning that these are not isolated incidents, that there are, as you pointed out uh, in the break, there are, uh, unfortunately, incidents where uh, men in uniform have reacted violently, often uh, violently towards their fellow uh, countrymen in uniform, sometimes towards their family. Uh, we've seen a high incidence of suicide, unfortunately, in the military in the last four years. Uh, we haven't seen these numbers since the Vietnam War. Um, and so we do need to do more to study uh, issues like uh, post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome. And we know that in the workplace in general, uh, there are people like this incident, unfortunately, today in Florida, where people lash out against their co-workers and, and, and uh, shoot and, and harm others. And that's something, again, we need to be on guard for. But to put a religious face or to try to discriminate against whole uh, groups of people uh, is just sad, and again, uh, just exploiting a tragedy for a uh, for a very ugly and uh, bigoted means. Suhail Khan, a senior fellow at the Institute for Global Engagement and a former senior political appointee of President George W. Bush, uh, a proud conservative who I really appreciate coming on this show. I have there are rumors that I am a very liberal person and I'm hard to talk to. <laughs> I really appreciate you uh, crossing crossing the Rubicon and talking with us, Suhail. Hey, thank you, Rachel.